All right, what is going on everyone? And welcome to a special video. This is actually a highly requested one that I thought I'd do an update on. So gear progression from seasonals all the way to end game. Now, I want to first start by saying I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. How you get it, it doesn't really matter. It's just what I'm going to try to tell you is how I went about doing it and efficient ways to do it. So what that means is um, we're going to do things in order of like price. And even if you are on a different server, uh, you could follow these and whether you're a beginner or not, hopefully this makes sense. So let's say you are starting off and I'm going to say as a baseline for you guys, you're going to be at the end of seasons, right? So assuming your gear looks something like this, full pen Tuvala, ignore that ring. I'll get it to pen at some point. But gear priorities and efficiency is very important because you don't want to spend like 20 billion silver for an item when you can get another item that has equivalent stats for like 10 billion, for example. So yeah, we're going to start with uh, this character and how do I go about upgrading and everything. So you are finishing season, which actually a few days ago, uh, they opened up early graduation for spring 2023. And you're probably like, okay, I'm full pen gear. How do I improve this from here? So what you're going to want to do is after you graduate, they give you some of these like reform stones or whatever, something, and then you can convert once per family, all your armors and weapons into boss gear, right? Um, this is a once per family thing and then after the season ends you can get like a uh, one item per thing and then convert that so after you you want to make sure that all your gear is at pen especially if this is your first time because when you transfer it it'll like reflect the stats on equivalent boss gear so like if it's pen you're gonna get tet boss gear and if it's at like tet you're gonna get like tri boss gear so you want to make sure uh, your Tuvala is at the highest it can be, which is Pen, because trust me when I say the difference between Tri and Tet uh, as a beginner is going to take you a while and uh, not as much as it was back in the day, but it's still like one extra step you don't have to do. And Tuvala is pretty easy to enhance, so I'd recommend doing it there. Okay, so assuming this is where you're starting at, um, later on you're going to go and you're gear is going to look something similar to this, more or less. Um, ignore the accessories. So, your gear is going to be something like boss gear equivalent, right? And um, so you have two options when it comes to gloves, which is Beggs gloves and Lieber's gloves. Uh, Beggs is the um, accuracy version and the DR version. And then Lieber's is the evasion version. So, as a newer player... I always recommend people going the DP route or the DR and accuracy because later on evasion is good, but that means you have to be very high up in the gear score levels and basically you're in like the top 5% of players. So yes, evasion is very good. However, later on it is good, but like as an average player, um, DR will just be better for everything, especially if you're just grinding. Um, I would say in most cases that DR for grinding, even PVE and I guess PVP mid game is, uh, overall better. So yeah, you have two options, Libras and Begs. You most likely want to choose the Begs. Trust me, there's a lot of ways to get the other alternative as well. So don't worry about that for now. And then for the shoes, there are two options, Uragon shoes and Muskins. Once again, Uragons is like the DR version. And Muskins is the evasion version. So one thing that's a little bit different besides all the like evasion and DR is Uragons at like both Tet level will have, I think, two more DP. So it is a little bit nicer if you're just trying to boost your numbers a little bit. It doesn't really matter, but it's just two more. And then your chess piece, you're going to either go for red nose option or or there's two options, actually. There's Red Nose and there's Dim Tree. Back in the day, I would have told you to get Dim Tree because it was a lot better. And nowadays, your ultimate goal 
is to let me let me show you this live so these are the two options dim tree and red nose so here's why you get red nose because uh eventually your goal is to get capris 10 pen and your final goal or the destination would be to get the fallen god armor right so this is best in slot for every class whether you're evasion or dr this is your end game goal so it's cheaper or it requires less capris to get capris 10 in your red nose armor than it does for the dim tree so the reason why back in the day if you watch very old guides um of why dim tree was good is because of the item effect now dim tree would give you plus 200 hp and that's just added to your pool whereas um red nose would give you um hp recovery now having a higher hp pool is always better than recovery at least in this game it is and still to this day so that's why people told you to get dim tree back in the day but nowadays when we have a best in slot option it's always going to be red nose into fallen god because it's cheaper by like a few billion silver um black star is like a step in between both of these and i would highly recommend just skipping all black star armors because it's the equivalent of getting it to capris 10 but you don't put in the capris kind of thing and i think it was made back in the day for when like capris markets are permanently sold out or just like a million or some orders on it and so there was an alternative route um however to get to fallen god you would have to get it to pen and then convert it but getting it to pen is like getting a pen black star weapon i do believe the chances might be a little bit different or like the enhanced rates but either way uh making it yourself is generally not a good idea because you're leaving it up to rng so what you're gonna want to do is just get the red nose there is a best option nowadays and then ultimately get your fallen god and so that's armors hopefully i explained it in a way that makes sense and why that if you looked at an old video people will tell you to get dim tree and why nowadays i would tell you to get red nose so hopefully that made sense so next we have two options in your helmet uh let me just show you on the market um let me see helmet options so once again kind of like the armors the labresca is the end game goal for everyone and you have two options when you convert your tuvala into a griffin helmet and gaia helmet now this is a little bit different because uh, they both require the same amount of capris at pen and then that's how you get your labresca plus the other items as well so either option is fine but i personally believe that griffin's helmet is slightly better so if we look at this uh, the griffin helmet gives all resistance plus five percent and the gaiath helmet gives 100 percent hp pool now back in the day if you were to ask me i would have told you resistances are a meme in this game and even to this day like i still kind of believe that but at the same time uh resistances are better and i've noticed it as well so um whether you pvp or not uh all resistances are generally better in my opinion so just like whether you're pvping not getting that cc is always nice uh or not getting cc'd i should say is better than 100 hp because as we all know in pvp in this game most people are pretty geared and even at like what 260 270 ap you can one combo someone around your gear score level and uh yeah not getting cc'd means you could win it so either way um i would choose griffins personally and then your end game goal is to get the labresca and then enhance it from there so you may be wondering you're looking at this gear right now let's say you have full boss gear and then uh weapons right um let's say all of these are tet you have a zarka a dandy and a kudum what are the weapons that you upgrade first i would personally upgrade the main hand weapon uh before your awakening weapon so the reason why is if you look at like these two uh this is a kind of a weird example because i'm already kind of geared on the here but 
Um, let me see. These are about the same, roughly, minus the try. So if you look at the main hand weapon, this is the equivalent stats of a Tet boss gear, right? And so if you look at it, the 192 accuracy is only on the main hand, right? And that actually is a lot. So accuracy in PvP is very good, and especially in certain grind spots that might need it is pretty good. So generally, accuracy is good. And for your awakening weapon, it doesn't have it until you get it to like pen capris 20 or something or like uh, not 20 but like it goes up by increments of like three or four or something so people may not believe it you, and i know that new players are just looking at this ap and dp number like attack points defense points and just like higher better uh yes but accuracy being able to hit your target is actually good it's, one of those have to trust me on that thing and so I would always recommend upgrading your main hand first, followed by your dandelion or your awakening weapon, and then followed by the offhand. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about boss gear before we get into like min max and stuff like black stars and then like green weapons. So we'll talk about that, but um, let's talk about offhands first. So for Dark Knights in particular, Let's look at this one because it's what I know. You have a lot of options. Um, Kudum is your general PvE, the golden standard of offhands. Nuver is a PvP offhand. And then we have Black Star, God Eyed, and then some green ones. So, once again, we're still in the beginner stage of this is what you get first, and then you upgrade later. So we'll get back into this, but generally, I think it gives you a choice of either one and ask yourself what you want to do. Like, are you strictly a pvp -er? Go for Nuver. If you are strictly a pve -er, then uh, go Kudum. However, I would choose Kudum in most cases, even if you do both things, because Kudum will allow you to grind more and get more money, therefore allowing you to buy a Nuver, and then you can do both. So, let's say... Our gear is where we're at, assuming all of this is at, like, Tet, right? So, with the current prices of things, and then factoring in accessories, prices, I believe that you could do Jatina's for the first two. So, Jatina is the NPC in every town that you will, like, basically look at this one, right? And then it's the progression pass at the top of your screen. So it'll allow you to get a guaranteed pen. Basically, you just get some materials and then enhance it pretty easy. Maybe I'll do a video of it one day just for the memes. Um, so then your first two will be cheaper to make than it is to buy everything, right? So I would look at what you think you need first. Like, do you want to try to grind higher end spots or do you feel squishy and you need more defenses? Um, so let's say all your armors and weapons are at Tet. Things I would do first is probably get your or main hand weapon to pen first, then your awakening. Um, if you don't play awakening and you're actually succession, you could leave it at Tet and then start working on uh, armors and stuff, right? So my general rule of enhancement upgrades and everything is Get the highest amount of stats that you are going for on your build for the cheapest amount of silver. So like, for example, let's look at a few things. All right, so let's look at accessories because once you're at full pen armors and weapons, that's your next goal. And what character actually has it? Uh, <laughs> Dude, my characters are all like different. So after you've done enough seasons, basically you get a pen Kaposha, right? So these are all the equivalents of uh, Tet gear. So let me show you. So keep this in mind. Pen necklace is 30 AP. Pen ring, 17 AP. Pen belt, 17 and 13. So I'm going to show you the equivalents of all of these and show you the prices so you can make the best judgment for yourself. 
And let's start with rings. So we started with um, the Kaposha, right? 17 AP. These are all like the equivalent of Tet. So this is 5 billion. Let's just say 5 billion to make the numbers easy. Um, so then that's the equivalent. And that's 5 billion. Necklace is 30 AP. That's 10 billion rounded up. Uh, your earring was 13, which is the equivalent of a tri tungrad And the belt was the equivalent of a pet or a tet bassy, which is 17, right? So we looked at those numbers. Now, in terms of upgrading and looking at gear, you should have at least one of all of these just by playing seasons, right? So you're probably like, okay, I got to get another one to... Uh, make sure... Oh, actually, this one is the equivalent of a Tet Narc earring uh, instead of a Tet or a Tritungrad. It's a Tet Narc. Um, okay, so you should have all of these. You get one per season by playing through it. Cool. And you're probably like, okay, so I need one more ring and one more earring. So next thing I would do is work on the ring because that one will probably give you the most AP um, instead of the earring. The earrings are always the last slot you upgrade. And so what you're going to want to do, assuming you have, like, let's say at this point, all your gear, like armors are at pen, so are weapons, and then you have seasonal, like, pens that you got from the rewards. So what do you do from here? Um, your next goal would probably be either caprising armors and like you could put capris levels into your gear um you could start looking at smaller upgrades like different like artifacts or not artifacts light stones you could start looking into crystals into your gear and um this also goes for life skills as well so you just get the cheapest life skills that give you the most mastery or, or like the most mastery for the cheapest amount of silver. That's the way it goes. So at this point, if you're still following along, you're probably looking at Capra stones in your armor, right? So what you're going to want to do is start putting Capra, sing, Capra stones in your armor, right? Now, one thing I would recommend to all of you is putting them in evenly. So like you have four pieces of armor, and you put them in like level one, level one, level one, level one, two, 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 two. Because every time you get a level of Capris, it will uh, cost more to get another level. So you want to put them in equally and then they give you stats. And so overall, the most efficient way to do it in terms of stat wise is pushing them all up to four. And then... You want to push them all up to like five, 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 six, six, six and so on. Um, so overall, that's a lot better. Um, instead of just pushing it to like Capris nine at once, then you get some stats, but it's not equalized stats. So let's say you get like five DP or something, right? If you pushed it from zero to nine. But then if you were to get like put them all at four at the same time, uh, you would be getting like four or five basically the equivalent of the stats instead of pushing one piece and it would cost more so yeah push them equally and then it's more or less equivalent and it's cheaper so after that you're probably thinking okay so i got my gear and weapons at pet or pen and everything is looking expensive now so what do i do uh before we look at accessories one thing I would really start investing in at this point is probably your crystals. So what we're going to be doing now is a live uh, showcase of what I would do. So these are endgame crystals for what I have personally. But what I wanted to do is build off of these and show you what I would do. Basically is what I'm showing you. So I'm going to assume that people don't have Garmoth's hearts. Or the middle one, which is basically a uh, slot in your armor for the extra ones. 
So I'm going to build as if I was a newer player and didn't have Garmoth's hearts in my weapons. Okay, so things you want to do generally is... I'm going to show you budget options before and like the later ones, right? So we have precision crystals and precisions are the budget versions of L cars. Quite honestly, these are pretty cheap nowadays to the point where I would just straight up go to L car. But for the sake of beginner upgrades, uh, you see how the difference is just for accuracy. Um, these are significantly cheaper. And then four other slots that I think are very cheap nowadays. You can get like 45 mil each. I would recommend people getting four hooms because this will allow you as a newer player to start grinding newer places. And these hoom crystals are more defensive and it'll allow you to try out higher grind spots and then find out something that you might like more um, and still be safer about it. So I think this is a good entry level um four set of crystals and then after that what i would recommend is infinity crystals of critical hit now the corrupted crystals are recommended and i think are personally better it's more of a glass cannon so like you get the same 10 percent critical and some ap but you also take more damage as well so as an entry level crystal i would go for a critical hit ones because these are very cheap and they don't have a negative penalty along with it. So after that, your ultimate goal would be to get Jin Special Evasion Crystals. However, these are like 700 mil each. And the reason why we get it is um, Special Evasion or Special Attack Evasion is very strong. All classes, I would recommend go for it. So these are the budget options. These are 700 mil. These are 4 mil. There's a huge difference. So these are entry level ones. I would go for two of these. Uh, all classes go for them, by the way. And uh, eventually your goal would be to get the end game ones. And so we have two slots left, right? And it depends on what you do, how much AP you're at. And so as a general rule, I would go like Dark Fang if you can afford it. These are kind of expensive. So I, it's like... If you don't want to spend 120 mil per crystal, some other options you could spend it on are RBF Harpias because they give HP and like damage to humans. So if you're a PvPer, um, this is pretty nice. Plus it gives the extra HP. Uh, if you don't do PvP at all, I would go for like Adamantines or Giants because resistances are like, I know I said they were a meme in the beginning, but like over time as I like test things out, Resistances are pretty good, so I would either go uh, double adamantines or double giants. Don't get like one of each because like having a lot of resistances, but like all of them are low, doesn't feel as good as stacking resistance. Whereas like you can be assured that uh, you're good. So more options for. PVEers are rebellious. These are like one and a half billion, which I really wouldn't recommend a newer player to get because like one billion as a new player is kind of a lot. So yeah, Harpias are a very good entry level one. They don't really, they, I think they're more tailored towards PVP, but you could always put like other stuff in it. So once you get the Garmoth's hearts in your weapon, um, so this is what it's going to look like, right? So uh, you'll have a regular one and then a fiery version. And so you're always going to want to get the fiery version. Obviously, it, it's easier said than done. I've been watching the market myself, even as a person who has all of them. And getting a Garmoth's heart is very difficult. But once you get them, you unlock two more slots, right? And it'll allow you to put them in here. And this one is just a coupon where it's kind of like a cash shop one where it allows you to put like uh, one critical hit or two movement speed. Ultimately, it's nice to have. You don't need it. Uh, you can get these stats by just using food buffs. And so once you unlock these two, you get these things. Uh, Glorious Crystal of Akarad or the Gallant Olucas Gallantry ones. So this one is PvP, the red ones, and the purple ones are for PvE, uh, depending on what you do. 
uh, you could put the crystals that you think are needed in there. So, um, yeah, that's how I would fill it out as a beginner. And now I would let's talk about the end game crystals. So this is my PV PVX setup. So like this one, I have this set for grinding higher end spots where I think I need more HP and resistances. And so like if I'm grinding and someone's like, hey, duel for spot or something. I think this one is a balance of resistances, uh, extra HP, more accuracy, and uh, all of that stuff, right? So that's what I call PVX, being able to defend your spot and when you're grinding. This one is strictly PVP, so like Node Wars, Open World, and everything. I have more PVP. The difference is Red Spirit Crystals are more damage, HP, and AP. Um... Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and then, so the like these two things are different. And this is strictly PvE. Now, I have these, which is just more AP. And sometimes you don't really need Vipers. It depends on where you grind. And I have Alukas in here. And you're probably wondering, why do you have this? This is your PvE setup. What extra hit damage to humans is not enemies. So, I have these because my gear is actually, this is gonna sound like a flex, but ultimately it's just educational. Um, my AP like overall is higher than your average. And so I gain more of a benefit from attack and casting speed than someone else. So as I mentioned before, what I would recommend people doing is getting like the Dark Red Fang of Valor, which is crit and AP. And if you don't wanna have, or you don't have any use for this, Here's another option. Um, where is it? It should be under here. Yeah, these things. Ancient Magic Crystal of Crimson Flame Power. You just add 5 AP. This might boost you up into a new AP bracket. Well, not like AP bracket, but like Monster Zone set bracket. So that's what I would recommend as a replacement. And if you want to take those out and then just add more of these in terms of that so that's my pve pvx and pvp setup this is my entry level crystal setup and this is my xp one you know all the crystals that you got from season that gives combat xp just stack those um so if you're grinding like a lower end spot and you just want more xp you can do that life skill is kind of a mess right now it's kind of a meme like all i want is gathering xp durability reduction and more energy so that's really all you need for life skills and now that we've got our uh crystals set up and let's say we're at full pen armors and weapons now our goal is to look at upgrading our accessories to like either full tet or pen and then a few things we have to look at are light stones and alchemy stones so alchemy stones are a little bit tricky to talk about because obviously the market really dictates what you get. So for the most part, for most people, I'm only going to talk about two of them because if you are a DR player, the protection stone, you literally just get the best one you can get. But it works a little bit differently for your offensive, right? So when I first started, uh, or I guess as a newer player, most of the time you guys are going to be using destruction stones or I believe, what is this? Um, Perilla's Star is a DP one that you can get from the seasonal reward. This is a grind grind one that you get through seasonals. It's for PVE. And I don't actually think there's a like straight up offensive PVP alchemy stone. Um, so here's what I would do. I know it, is, it looks like it's permanently sold out, but what I would do is, as an entry level, start with the destruction stones and use those until you think you need an upgrade. After you think you need an upgrade, get the sharp and then go Vels. The difference is like 15 billion. I know it's a lot, but Vels gives AP on the side, like sheet AP. And then the 1% of people will get splendids but ultimately, Bell is your go-to for most people. I know there's a lot of orders. You either get lucky from getting it from Bell, or you get lucky from buying it off the market. It is what it is. It sucks. I wish they would 
do something about it. But maybe one day. Life skillers. Honestly, as a life skiller, you could use life spirit stones. These are fine. You get the Trent's tier, I think, from a seasonal, or is that was that limited? I don't know. Either way, this one is free. I got it from a seasonal, and I actually find myself using this more often than anything. And this is coming from a person who also has a cons heart, and this one is like 10 billion. But I used a free one because I like life XP a little bit more than the 25 mastery. Um, it mastery does make a difference, but you know when you level up, you get plus five permanent mastery, so. It's a little bit of a trade-off, but I think what you think is better. If it pushes you up into a new bracket, cool. So that is alchemy stones in a nutshell. Don't be afraid to use, like, spirit stones. They're not bad. It's better than not having it. But once again, I understand it's very difficult to get these. So as a general rule, Vels is going to be your average player to even end game. A lot of people just straight up still use Vels because you can't get a Splendid. It's very difficult. And then life skillers. Um, if you can get a resplendent of life, I do believe that is, or a splendent or a resplendent. These are very good options. Otherwise, Khan's heart is more obtainable. You can get it by sailing or obviously fighting Khan and getting the drop or doing sailing and saving up uh, sea coins and then buying it directly. Or I would recommend just Trying to save up for a sharp alchemy stone of life if you want. But if you can get the Trent's tier, just use that. That's pretty good. All right. So next on our list of accessories, this is going to be pretty quick. So as you guys know, if you're building AP, you want to get the things that give you the most AP for the cheapest amount of silver. And usually in the order it goes is a necklace followed by a belt and then rings. And then earrings are the last ones. And by the point of you getting full accessory earrings, uh, you're probably at a good gear score point to the point where you're just like, hmm, maybe I can trade up some AP for accuracy or more defensive stats. So that's something you pick later on. And uh, that's also something I'm working on as well. And then when it comes to artifacts and light stones, you just have to grind for those. And then as for various light stones, good luck getting some of them on the market. I'll just show you mine as a nutshell. So magic AP is what I use uh, a lot. And so don't disregard the light stones I have in here. I'm still trying to buy strike crystals and then they'll be replaced when I get them. But magic AP and then this is accuracy, which is uh, like, you know, just more accuracy. Better for PvP. -ing. And then straight up for grinding, monster damage and XP. DR is sometimes the one that I use when I'm trying out new spots. It's just straight up DR. And then various life skillings ones. So figure out what you think is more important. For the average player, I would recommend the like magic, melee, or ranged AP over accuracy. Just as a general go-to until you figure out what you need later on. And yeah, I think that was like overall a basic rundown of how I would go progressing my gear. Uh, once again, the general rule, most stats, least amount of silver, and some items are hard to get because of the market. So if you need help with anything, feel free to ask. I've been playing this game for a long time, and if you have like a question on progression order or just like where do I go next, on my Discord we have a channel for um, gear advice and everything. So if you need help, just post uh, like a screenshot of your gear and everything, and I'm happy to help you. So Jatina is also another good option and you have one of three options and generally the crescent ring is the way to go. So yeah, that's about it. I know this has been a 35 minute video, but for all of you who have like stick, stuck around for it, hopefully you guys enjoyed it or learned something. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. Would love to see you guys come back. I have been playing this game for quite a while and love helping newer players who are returning or you're just a newer player or you're looking to get better. So these are why I make the videos to pass my knowledge on to you guys. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.